we've just discovered further evidence that Nikon is indeed working on a sensor capable of being both a global and a rolling shutter all at the same time. This would require a sensor that's capable of operating separate drive and control mechanisms that are responsible for controlling the different imaging groups, operating different accumulation times, giving Nikon an edge in their Z9 Mark II. But before we get to the details, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, helps this channel grow, and keeps you up to date on the latest camera coverage. A Nikon patent application, JP 2024-1598-86, filed on August the 21st, 2024, and published on November the 8th, 2024, Nikon claims to divide an imaging region into a plurality of regions in which different imaging conditions are set, and to generate a plurality of moving images corresponding to the plurality of regions. So the imaging region, that's referring to part of the image sensor itself. And plurality, plurality of regions, well, we see this word plurality in a lot of patent applications, and it just simply is patent speak for many. So the real question then is, why is Nikon looking at dividing up their imaging sensor to, well, many regions? What purpose could that solve? Well, perhaps this quote could help. Ryan, cue the quote. This allows for capturing distinct stills or moving images that are tailored to different conditions. That kind of captures it in a nutshell. The ability to divide up the frame, the image, into multiple different regions so it can apply different attributes to those regions depending on what's going on. But let's go back to the whole idea of the sensor itself. This patent application really isn't the first patent application that deals with a single sensor that functions as both a global shutter and a rolling shutter. Nikon patent application JP 2024-138-158 filed on July the 30th, 2024 and published October the 7th describes a sensor that is able to obtain an imaging signal by a rolling shutter system and an imaging signal by a global shutter system in a single frame. JP 2024-138-158 is very clear. Nikon's working on a sensor that is capable of acting as both a global shutter and a rolling shutter sensor in the same frame. So the patent application filed on November the 8th, JP 2024-159-886, what it shows is additional research and development, additional resources spent towards, well, understanding how they can make this combined rolling and global shutter sensor work. And that leads to the next big question is, well, how does it work? Patent application JP 2024-159886 introduces a multi-layered semiconductor design. The photoelectric conversion units are able to function in a group, able to operate under different conditions from the other imaging groups. A separate driving and control mechanism are responsible for ensuring that the different imaging groups can operate different accumulation times. And it's this that allows the sensor to capture varying brightness in motion and stills images in different imaging regions. Next, signal processing translates the information into digital data where it can be passed off to the imaging unit. And when I saw this patent application filed on November the 8th, I was excited because that means that all the effort going into developing a combined global and rolling shutter sensor that we saw back on July the 30th isn't just a single patent application, meaning that it could be filed on a shelf somewhere. The ability to capture images free from any motion blur, such as the ones captured with the Sony A9 Mark III, while also receiving the benefits of an efficient light capturing rolling shutter system in a single frame, that's exciting. That's really exciting. And part of any reality check is asking us, what is the likelihood? What is the probability that we could see this in Nikon's upcoming flagship camera, a successor to the Nikon Z9, the Nikon Z9 Mark II? Well, as I said earlier, a single patent application sounds cool, but if that's all we get and we see nothing else, 
then most likely the whole idea of a combined sensor with a global shutter and rolling shutter capabilities in a single frame, um, that's most likely going to be filed on a shelf somewhere. They probably hit some sort of technical roadblock and ended up passing on it. But as we see additional patent applications that tackle different parts of the technology, well, that further increases the probability that we'll see this in an upcoming camera. And most likely it's not going to be on entry level cameras such as a Z30, a Z50 successor, but most likely a refresh to their flagship mirrorless camera, the Nikon Z9. And we are getting pretty close to that window of when a refresh is certainly possible. But there's something else to consider here. We're not talking about rumors. This is fact. This is from Nikon in their own words, published at a patent office. This is actual research. So this is showing us what Nikon is working on. So forget rumors for a minute here. This is happening. This is going on today. They're doing research and development into a sensor that's capable of acting as both a global shutter and a rolling shutter in the same frame. But there's something else to consider as well. Nikon's completed their acquisition of RED, and this happened back in April. And all these patent applications for a new hybrid global and rolling shutter sensor, well, they started showing up in July and then in November. So I get a sense that Nikon is doubling down on innovation and they're coming up with a unique new sensor. RED had pretty good sensors. The ability to have anywhere from 17 to 20 stops of dynamic range, well, that's pretty exciting. And it's not just exciting for video users. As a stills user, as somebody looking at getting the Nikon Z9 Mark II, to be able to take the technology, the intellectual property from the sensors that RED developed, and then combine that with Nikon's own in-house expertise, I'm not surprised that we're seeing some radical new patent applications. The pat patent applications that, well, I'm not seeing from Canon or Nikon, sorry, Canon or Sony. And we have seen many patent applications from Canon working on a global shutter sensor going back some eight years, but none of these indicate any sort of hybrid thinking. It's kind of following along the lines of the Sony A9 III coming up with a traditional global shutter sensor and that's it. One thing's for certain, Nikon's clearly thinking outside the box, but maybe you're tuning in because you're just interested in technology. Maybe the Nikon Z9 is a bit too expensive. Well, I've got some good news. Black Friday's just around the corner and we're already seeing some incredible deals. And one of those is a high-end Nikon camera. The Nikon Z8, it's $500 off. And maybe you're a Canon shooter. Well, if you are, then take a look at the Canon EOS R5 Mark I. It's $27.99. And I could go on for about the next five to 10 minutes, and I'm not. Take a look in the description down below. I've got some 20 to 30 links. Everything is on sale from the most affordable cameras like the R100, the R50, the Z30, all the way up to the high-end cameras such as the R3, the 1DX Mark III, the Nikon Z8, and even Sony's getting in on the game. We see the A7S III, the a7R5, the a7 IV, all, all on sale. And we're not talking $100 or $200 off. We're talking a minimum of $400 off, going up to $500 off. And I, I got to tell you, Sony doesn't do a lot of sales. And when they do, it's usually for a week or two. So I would expect these sales to stay on until Black Friday. But then when Black Friday is over, well, no, hey, let's, let's be a little realistic here. Sales often continue onto Cyber Monday. But I uh, wouldn't be surprised if those deals come off, even though we're expecting a refresh of Sony cameras, that's supposed to be happening in Q1. And if you're interested in purchasing any new cameras or lenses, then please consider doing me a favor. I don't ask for any money, I don't ask for any fees, and I don't put those annoying Squarespace and Skillshare 60 second, 90 second spots at the beginning of the video. Um, if you wanna help support this channel, if you use my affiliate links down below, I get a small fee or commission back. It uh, doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to jump through hoops, put in any codes. It's the best of both worlds. You get gear at a great price and you get to help keep the lights on for this channel, viewer supported. And, and I, I, I'd rather do it this way because it's right at the end of the video. It's not up front. And if you're one of those people, one of the 10% that actually pays YouTube so you don't have, you don't have to watch ads, I know it's got to be irritating when you have to sit through a 60 to 90 second spot 
right at the beginning. And that's why I don't do that. I rely on the, the affiliate and pre-order links. But that's it for now. I hope you have a great rest of the week. I've got some other interesting videos coming out. I've got one scheduled for the 27th. I'm under NDA, so I can't really say much about that. And um, I don't think we're done with announcements this year. I can't tell you anything else right now because I am under an NDA. Um, all I can say is other things are coming before the end of the year. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching and commenting. Have yourself a great day. We'll definitely see you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye now. Thank <laughs> you.